we believe that in the church today, there are apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. They are functioning in the church today. Prophets have taken this passage and said, look, the reward you get for honoring the prophet is better return on investment than if you honor a righteous man or a disciple. But that was not what Jesus was saying in these verses. The simplicity of what Jesus was saying is this. If you receive anyone who comes in my name, you will receive a reward from God because you honor that person because he belongs to the Lord. But here's what has happened in the Christian world worldwide. And because it's happening in our own city and some of our own people have been affected, we are addressing it here. What has happened is, like I said earlier, Prophetic ministers will present this message. The prophet's reward. You will get the prophet's reward. But you and I must understand a few things from scripture. You see, you, know, you and I, we are not against honoring God's people, honoring God's ministers. We are not against it. But we don't want you to be exploited. Old Testament has to be understood and applied to the lens of the New Testament. Revelation is progressive. You don't take an Old Testament scripture and just directly apply it to the believer. You've got to look at the Old Testament to the lens of the New Testament. Because what has happened after that? What has happened? What did Jesus say in Matthew eleven eleven? He said, I surely I say to you, among those born of women, there is not one risen greater than John the Baptist... But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Think about it. The least person in the kingdom is greater than the greatest Old Testament prophet. Don't forget that the least one in God's kingdom is greater than the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. Or Jesus put it like this in Matthew 25. And in verse 40, he said, you know, he's talking about the judgment day when he'll separate the sheep from the goats. And Jesus will say, I was hungry, you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was in prison, you visited me. And they will say, Lord, when did we do all this? And in verse 40, he says, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to when you did it to the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. But somehow we've forgotten this. And the church gets so fascinated. You know, when, when you see this prophet come and he does all this one, you know, amazing things. Oh, I'll give him money. But you see the least person sitting next to you probably is going through some challenge. You don't think about, should I not help him or her? Jesus said, when you do it to the least, you're doing it to the Lord. When Simon, who's just become a new believer, he sees that to the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit is given. Simon says, Peter, how much money do you need? One lakh, two lakhs, five lakhs? Give me this power that on whomever I lay hands, they will also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What does Peter do? Peter rebukes him. He says, your money perish with you. Because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. I want us to understand. The gifts of God, the spirit of God, the work of God's spirit cannot be purchased with money. It's a free gift by grace. The things of God cannot be purchased with money. You can receive it by grace. But you cannot buy it with money. One thing, have discernment and have the courage to say no. Don't be exploited. Don't be coerced into giving with all of these false promises of a prophet's reward or of uh, anointing coming on your life or all of those things. No. You give because of the willingness of your own heart as the Lord leads and guides you. Bless the ministers of God but don't forget to honor the least. 
Because when you honor the least, you honor Christ. Yeah.